All right. So uh, we have started the recording as well. We started the recording a bit late. So people who will be watching the recording, you have missed out a, uh, a bit of the part where uh, we have already discussed the need for, for this LPG or the new economic policy that why the need arose. And uh, let me reshare my screen. Fine. So uh, here I was talking to you that uh, the the uh, middle class that you have, uh, the middle class is very important, especially for uh, developing countries like, uh, uh, just a second, huh? It's Dr. Smriti who's there on the line, so I need to take it. Uh, just a moment. Fine. So uh, as I was saying that, uh, what was I saying? I was talking about the middle class. And uh, the middle class is very, very important uh, in, in developing economies. And a lot of your problems get created because of it. Like, um, of course, uh, the problems are also generated by them. But, you know, a lot of solutions come from the middle class. And uh, plus um, the aspiration values, the aspiration values of, of the middle class is something which pushes the economy because the major demand, if you're looking at the major demand or the, the maximum demand comes from this sector and they are the ones who push the economy forward. So uh, uh, like they, they do it. And if, if you want to increase, so what the government wanted was that the government wanted to increase uh, the consumption of these things. So, uh, like, uh, if you look at the number, it's 250 to 300 million. I'm just minimizing it because uh, there's somebody who wants to get in, and it's Vrinda Raj. Okay, Vrinda. Uh, fine. Uh, this is something which is very bad with uh, Google Meet. Mm. This so uh, uh, the government uh, wanted to concentrate on these 250 300 million people uh, 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 by creating a demand, and mind you, it is just not satisfying the demand because obviously, if you want to satisfy demand, you have to supply goods, and if you have to supply goods, you have to produce goods, if you have to produce goods you generate employment. If you generate employment, you are putting money back in the economy. When you put money in the economy, there is a multiplier effect, which leads to multiplier, like multiplier or multiple times that, that money flow goes in. As a result, you're back to increasing demand and that cycle continues which is a cycle of virtue. Like otherwise we always say the vicious cycle, it's a, it's a circle of virtue that happens. No, I, 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 am, I, am I making sense? Is it fine till now? Is it okay? Okay, right, thank you. Uh, a lot of girls have joined today. Like the female population is much more than the male population. The males have gone out for, in the evening for the Saturday weekend, I suppose they are celebrating. Okay. Dimpy, yes to the weekend or yes to my understanding? I suppose I'll take that as a, my understanding. So let us uh, move to the next uh, slide. Where we, where we are talking about, uh, there, there is an, uh, there's a quotation by... Uh, 
okay one more thing that you can hear you you can look here is that uh, uh, two wheelers uh, 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 we were looking for better designs in the two wheeler segment and uh, 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 technology wise we were thinking that we'll will uh, uh, move ahead so uh, all those things uh, all those things are good and uh, uh, they'll help. They'll help the uh, to move the economy forward, and that is how you uh, you you take the economy ahead. And uh, uh, plus, we also now because we were already liberalizing the economy, we knew that we'll be going for uh, privatization and globalization. So we knew that uh, we have to now uh, compete with the foreign companies. So we had to make sure that we do it well. So now this is uh, uh, this is a quote by Anthony Giddens, and Anthony Giddens is basically he he was basically a sociologist uh, uh, who said uh, 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 like uh, about globalization, like we are now moving from liberalization to globalization. So Anthony Giddens said that uh, the intensification of worldwide social relations, which link distant distant localities in such a way that local happenings are shaped by events. Occurring many miles away and vice versa. Now, uh, especially to all the women out here, uh, all the ladies out here, uh, do you know what is happening in America as far as women are concerned? There's something happening in America right now which is uh, detrimental for women. Are you people aware of that? Abortion rights, absolutely, Dimpy. Absolutely right. Uh, they have taken away the abortion rights from women in most of the states uh, because uh, the Supreme Court of America has said that it, uh, we are leaving it on the states and uh, let the states take the final call. And a lot of, uh, just, uh, just before the class, I was reading that there is a 10 girl, 10 year old girl who has been raped and uh, the court is asking her to carry on the pregnancy it has happened in ohio uh, state of america where uh, she's being asked to not to terminate her pregnancy and uh, just imagine a 10 year old girl getting pregnant and uh, uh, being raped uh, getting pregnant and then she she's uh, being asked to carry forward the pregnancy like what sort of a society is that and um, uh, and that in a, in a country like america which was always uh, hailed as one of the most developed countries in the world so we are we are far better uh, in far better conditions than in america uh, right now and i suppose uh, that's the re like the ma major reason is that uh, it has got, it, it has one of the weakest precedents in the history of america that they have though uh, democrats are there but they have got one of the weakest precedents uh, in the history now this is what sociologist anthony giddens is saying that there are events which are happening in some other countries which are affecting you and there are uh, if if uh, i don't know like because it's a, it's a, a more of a political thing uh, but uh, we, we if we if we talk about the political uh, the the repercussions of politics on economy uh, uh, there's a certain uh, spokesperson of bhartiya janta party who uh, said some derogatory remarks about uh, the uh, the prophet uh, uh, the prophet of uh, muslims and uh, though she was being hailed in the country uh, there were no charges against her but suddenly she was removed from the post of the spokesperson uh, was it a reaction to the Indian uh, uh, people or was it a reaction because of the international pressure? Was the removal of that certain spokesperson a result of the backlash in India or was it international pressure? Yes, so it was a backlash by the Gulf countries. And uh, you had to take, so this is what globalization has done. This is the power of globalization. Can be right, can be wrong. We saw what happened in Iraq. We saw what happened to Saddam Hussein. We saw uh, the type of, of uh, tyranny uh, of Bush, George Bush the junior. Uh, George Bush the junior, yes, it was George Bush the junior at that time. So, uh, 
uh, the so this is what globalization has and it, it has got such a massive massive impact look at the war between ukraine and russia it is continuing for a pretty pretty long period but just uh, uh, the type of impact that it is happening on on food supply uh, there are there are so many countries in africa who have suddenly become very vulnerable to hunger because of the lack of exports of wheat from Russia and uh, Ukraine. Because we know that uh, they are the granaries of the world if, if we are talking about wheat. Uh, and plus uh, edible oil. Ukraine is one of the major suppliers of uh, edible oil and we also got hurt. Like if, if you are talking about our economy, we also got hurt because the, suddenly the prices of uh, edible oil has gone up because we import a lot of edible oil from, uh, from Ukraine. So, uh, uh, if you remember a few days back, I'm, I'm giving you all these examples just for you to understand. If you remember, uh, there was uh, this uh, ship that got stuck. Did you people read about that? There was a certain ship that got stuck and uh, created a havoc. Yes, where was it, Shruti? A Japanese vessel? Where was it? The Swiss Canal. Absolutely right. The Swiss Canal. And I suppose it took it seven days, nine days. How many days it was there? Uh, seven, uh, seven or nine days it was stuck, isn't it? Uh, in the Swiss Canal and where uh, when all the things had to be re... Uh, what? Uh, Rerouted. Uh, a lot of uh, the ships were rerouted. A lot of them got stuck there. And again, that is the impact of globalization. That is the impact of globalization that you, uh, because you are six days, okay. So because you are, uh, you are uh, trading in such huge numbers that these things get effect affected. Uh, you, you get impacted by that. Uh, so uh, what is globalization? So globalization is primarily economic uh, phenomena involving the increasing interaction or integration of national economic systems through the growth in international trade, investment and capital flows. It uh, intends to integrate the Indian economy with the world economy. Now here it is very, very important that we mention uh, WTO. Okay, if, if we don't mention WTO over here, uh, it will be very, very wrong on our, on our parts because globalization has been triggered by wto wto was formed in 1994 started functioning in 1995 and india is a signatory member of wto and of course it uh, came from uh, gat general agreement on trade and tariff and from there the world trade organization this this is a this is a statutory body So that makes it legal. GATT was not legal. Like it was not a statutory body. It was just in, uh, where the countries came together uh, for trade and tariffs uh, they uh, were going in. Now, um, what WTO has done, like again, going back to your, your first unit where you talk about social, economic and cultural environment and political environment and environmental and, uh, environment, all those things when you're talking about... Um, you have to understand that in the 1980s, uh, there was, uh, if, you, if you look at 1980s, USSR started becoming weak. Okay. So uh, it started weakening. And USA started expanding. It started expanding. It became more and more powerful. Now, uh, 70s, uh, if you look at 70s, the, uh, the trade went down because America uh, slowly started moving from manufacturing. It started moving from manufacturing to trading. And... Uh, like if if you just look at the automobile industry now the automobile industry shifted from uh, america to japan right 
so that that shift was there it was there in other uh, in other manufacturing as well so they, they started marketing and they started trading uh, things now in in the 70s and 80s when the dev the developing countries they started forming their own um like uh, they started developing their indigenous technology they started working they uh, uh, they started working on their their strengths uh, they started uh, to 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 uh, um, uh, transform their agrarian economies into industry uh, industrial economies to 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 service oriented industries so uh, that that transformation slowly started and uh, so it was not easy for america or for the developed countries or the european countries to come and dump their products uh, in these countries so they were looking for ways and means uh, to to get into it and what better than having a statutory body which says that look you need to trade you need to open you cannot put tariff barriers you cannot give subsidy to agriculture you cannot have unfair rules you have intellectual property rights you have a, a general agreement on trade and services a lot of shebang uh, uh, happened with wto so uh, basically america and then the final uh, nail in the coffin was i suppose uh, in um, uh, like uh, like uh, which 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 paved the way for america to emerge as the uh, like uh, like or the global economy moving from a bipolar to a unipolar system was uh, the balkanization of ussr so that that when that happened when that balkanization balkanization happened suddenly it gave uh, 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 america the opportunity to enter all the countries to all the markets and start doing that and later on like right now if you talk right now we we say that china has gone everywhere and people people uh, people um, generally are very negative about china especially in india if you're talking about china uh, people are very negative about it that you know it's it's doing bad uh, it should not enter into other people's countries it should not uh, uh, be taking away their assets but that is what america had been doing it for uh, years uh, if, if look at what happened to uh, north korea and south korea like uh, uh, if it would have not been because of usa and ussr look at what happened to afghanistan look at what happened to all these uh, west asian countries uh, like say jordan jordan was a such a such an important country such a peace it, it was a peaceful country it did not interfere into the matters of others and uh, it it held on its own of course it was supported by america a lot but then then things went uh, started going wrong uh, it turns a blind eye towards israel and palestine and that that problem continues uh, if if you uh, i don't know how many of you people have uh, uh, have been reading about africa uh, in africa it, it's it's such a pathetic condition like uh, if you look at the area near chad uh, there is a country called chad and if you if you look at those borders uh, it's it's a fight between the americans and the french to take over the the uh, land there and it's 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 uh, the the conditions of the people are is uh, abysmal because you know it's it's uh, it's uh, 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 like in uh, hindi we say that matlab ek taraf kua ek taraf khai wali baat ho jati hai ki they have got no where to go because if they if they try to cross the borders then they are shot dead uh, there uh, if they are coming back to the country uh, countries then there are those pirates there uh, people are looting there then you have uh, those uh, those um, uh, boko haram uh, boko harama then uh, uh, there are so many others uh, pirates somalian pirates pirates there are, there's so much uh, going on in africa uh, the, the same way like in india if you look at india we have this uh, like politically of course uh, we do not want to align with china economically we don't have a choice so so this these these things are what globalization and that is where the wto has played a major 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 role uh in in uh, doing all these things right so uh i don't know whether i'm making any sense am i sometimes uh, in online classes you feel as if you're teaching to a vacuum you're teaching into a vacuum like आप बोले चले जा रहे हैं एंड स्टूडेंट्स आर नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव हैड योर इवनिंग टी
how many of you have had your evening tea yes or no tea coffee whatever yes dimpy um kuch dimag mein ja raha hai ki main bas baatein kiye chali ja rahi yes ma'am it's very much clear okay thank you it is dimpy you are from where acha it's quite interesting Info- yes interesting and informative okay good thank you even if you don't find it just keep saying that it it boosts my be- uh, ego <laughs> and it boosts my confidence that okay kuch to samajh mein aa raha hai Yes. Uh, <laughs> Dimpy, you are from where? I am currently in Gurgaon. Okay, and uh, you are working with? I uh, right now I am on sabbatical. Uh, okay. I was I was uh, working uh, in uh, supply chain management, procurement wow. and sourcing. Good. You know, it gives me immense pride uh, to see girls in these uh, jobs. because i if we were always told that you know uh, you can't do this go for hr go for these things uh, operations and supply chain is not meant for you it's for the boys i feel so proud when i see girls like you uh, breaking that gra- glass ceiling and uh, yes uh, ma'am thank you ma'am, so much <laughs> ma'am it's quite interesting also because i uh, get opportunity to visit factories and uh, we uh, we only knew, know about factories and Uh, this industry is only through books but in reality they are totally different so the is... working conditions somewhere are so pathetic if yes. you look at the work there very pathetic working conditions yes some of them are very pathetic but on the uh, contrary there are some other industries which are quite impressive you at times you don't feel that they are working in india like they have got so much uh, facilities the workers and uh, even the working environment is quite uh, positive so there are, there is quite uh, a contrast you see uh, a little contrast uh, i i like i again sorry sorry for transgressing uh, uh, students uh, i was about to say kids <laughs> so sorry for that uh, uh, i uh, uh, digressing sorry uh, the the thing is that uh, i have seen that in india uh, Uh, the family owned businesses though there are a lot of uh, lacunas in family owned businesses generally the the uh, your uh, decision making becomes very uh, like uh, it's very what laid back but uh, for the workers if you are talking the uh, the loyalty is much higher in family run businesses and generally the working conditions are far better there than in the so called professionally run uh, things i might be wrong i might be wrong i might have seen all the wrong examples but uh, what examples i saw i found this that the factory run ones uh, the the family run ones are very very uh, well run well well oiled things yes ma'am yes ma'am because uh, it is uh, for generations they have been doing the business and they actually they take that uh, factory workers as their own family people mm mm-hmm. mm and that's what you see and even the employees also they work towards the employer in that manner wo loyalty gajab ki hai bahut badhiya loyalty aapko dekhne ko yeah they don't leave in between they will keep continuing till their retirement age retirement yes yes uh, because in in punjab also i have been seeing all these things so i i saw because i i don't know i had this mindset ki you need professionals to run the business and everything and when i now see them uh, like i saw that in bhopal also there has been examples of, of that in uh, bhopal as well where uh, the the family run ones have done far better so yeah so like uh, and glo- even with globalization and everything happening with so many new firms coming in and all those things but it's it's uh, good to see that uh, it's there and uh, yeah that is how it was okay chalo uh, <laughs> yeah right okay so now now let us talk about the parameters of globalization so if we, if we are talking about the parameters of globalization so uh, basically as i said it was all about removing the trade barriers uh you wanted like you know again now that this is very contradictory uh we started with protectionism protectionism we started with protectionism we moved to globalization we are now back to protectionism uh 
the reason uh, of course protectionism we had it because of, uh, as as developing country uh, like if even if i just talk about india we wanted that we wanted uh, we did not want everything to be open because that would have uh, been very detrimental for our uh, our uh, growth and development uh, globalization of course uh, from a, from the customer point of view uh, it has been superb uh from employment generation also it has been good not bad in terms of production and productivity it has been good because uh, your your productivity went up because you started competing and so you know uh, knew that uh, there's no other way of doing it but the problem with india has been like uh, uh, we uh, like though i i'm not growing in that chronology uh not only in india i suppose uh, all over the world like i should not uh, just focus on india is that uh, there is this international finance capital now what is international finance capital uh, international finance capital is basically your fii's now what globalization has done is that it opened up the tra trade barriers you started trading you started doing everything and you made money mobile you made money mobile that mean means that money started uh flowing in all directions and it it, it became uh, like it became a transnational sort of a thing that anybody could invest anywhere and stuff like that uh so uh, what has happened with fii's is that uh initially uh it was a very very positive thing we, uh, we took it as a very positive thing this entire uh, thing but uh, uh, there might be a lot of people from finance uh, who know this uh, much better than I know is that uh, uh, this international finance capital or the FIIs, the foreign institutional investments that you have, they remain uh, generally the average period uh, of uh, uh, average period of their remaining in a country's 14 days. And that's the reason we also call it flight capital it flies away so this this uh, what globalization did was of course it reduced the barriers it created an environment in which there was free flow of capital so this free flow of capital you created that environment you made things come in your in india the stock exchange uh, rules were changed sebi came in uh, you tried to regulate and you tried uh, started making the stock market as a barometer of the economy which it is not uh, uh, and pe but if you talk to people and they'll say Stock market up ja raha hai, economy bahut achha kar rahi hai. Stock market crash ho gaya, economy doob gayi. Uh, how many retail investors do, do we have in the stock market? It's hardly four percent, six percent. Hardly, it's hardly six percent now. Uh, retail investors, I'm talking about. Please remember, you have DIIs, domestic institutional investors. That's a very substantial amount. FIIs, very substantial amount. But if you are talking about retail investors the number is still very small so uh, what globalization did was that it allowed the capital to move but but and this is uh, this is a big reservation that i have of course you people uh, may not agree with me but the my biggest reservation with globalization of course you can't stop globalization you should not stop globalization but for me it was that why did you not make labor mobile if you are you want my country men to invest money in your country my country my politicians are allowing the people from other countries and other companies like foreign companies to come and invest here why am i not allowed to go and work in any part of the world when i start doing that when labor starts doing that then you have all sorts of boundaries and you create all sorts of boundaries and you tell me that no you can't come here you can't go there you can't go there or you then uh, uh, you then give uh, uh, different adjectives to them you call them migrants uh, you call them uh, the, uh, all those things like like if 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 you if you look at uh, uh, now again a very very interesting thing i i, I don't know how much uh, sense i'll make uh, for you but uh, what globalization uh, did uh, especially for the european countries that we are talking it has 
uh, you might find that I'm jumping, though I'm not jumping like in my mind, I'm, I'm moving in a very sequential manner. Uh, you opened up trade, you opened up capital, you uh, gave the permission for technolo technology to free uh, to flow freely. And you, you are saying like the fourth point is saying that you create an environment for the free movement of labor. Now, this, the, there's no such thing as free movement of labor. It is the, the labor is very handpicked. It's cherry picked what sort of labor you want, where you want it, why you want it. Indian software engineers are very popular in the West, not just because of the skill set that we have, but because we come cheap. So you get a package, so called, but if you convert that into dollars, you get a very small part of it. It's, it's still there, which it remains. Germany has opened its boundaries for migrants, for people who are moving from all these, especially from these uh, Arab countries and parts where there has been a lot of distress, a lot of political distress has been there and you they have opened up. Uh, they have not opened up because they want the migrants to come in it is not as if they want uh, they are very benevolent the reason is that germany has got a very old population so uh, countries like germany spain italy france uh, these countries are old countries now same case is happening with japan uh, the only developed country of asia uh, at a point of time so um, they they want all these refugees to come into their countries because that is where the labor force comes in and that is where the cheap labor force comes in so you you solve two problems you solve your own problem of course because you need labor and you also show to the world that uh, look we are we are good enough and we are opening our doors to the refugees of course uh, uh, like the 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 ex uh, Chancellor of Germany, uh, she she did a lot of changes there, and she emerged as a very very important leader of Europe. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that's a fact, and that is what globalization has done to you because a lot of crisis. Because you know, capitalism in itself is like it has got inherent uh, uh, crisis, and that inherent crisis in capitalism, uh, like it creates a crisis. Then it comes out for the solution to show you that, look, we are solving everything and it is for your better meant that we are doing it. And then that continues for a period of time. And then again, it creates a crisis. So that, that, that crisis is inherent in it. I'm not saying that we should be going to communism. I'm not saying that we should be following socialism or, or have a command economy. No, but you have to be very, very like as, as managers, you need to understand that environment within which you are functioning and uh, within which these countries are functioning and how you bargain because a lot of you might be working in the foreign uh, uh, like uh, in that foreign department of your companies where you deal with these foreign people and you need to remind them that this is how it works so the whatever the measures that were taken in india for for globalization one was of course we reduced the import duties because we were uh, as as a part as a part of wto we had to do that we encouraged foreign investment and when i use the word foreign investment here please remember that we are talking about uh, 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 we are talking about both here we are talking about fdi that is foreign direct investment and we are talking of fii that is foreign institutional investment both the things we encouraged uh, we encourage foreign technology because uh, this is one thing which uh, uh, has been positive for us for most of the developing countries because um, there are a lot of cheap technology that is uh, that is out there uh, there are two ways of going about one you develop your own technology you develop your own indigenous technology you do all those things mm, which is very good gives uh, your r and a lot of boost uh, it it gives your scientists and innovators and inventors a lot of uh, space uh, to work out but there are a lot of technologies which are already available the second part well, it's, it's already available it's cheap so it doesn't make a lot of sense to make that same technology again so you just copy that or you just 
buy that uh, have a collaboration with those companies and you go ahead and you uh, you you have those things like in india uh, the sort the sort of mechanizations that are happening in the in your households uh, a lot of things were not heard of or people did not think of those things like having cc uh, cameras cctv cameras at one point of time they were very expensive they were a matter of pride for the companies who had them a lot of companies had it because it was mandate like it was required not mandatory of course but it was required now every house has a cctv camera a small house a two story building and will be four cc cameras uh, around the house and that, that is because the technology has become cheaper look at the smartphones that you and i are carrying if for 10000 bucks you you get a smartphone which does so much work if if you know how to use it uh, you are literally carrying your office with you uh, i don't know how many of you have used blackberry uh, but at one point of time the usp of blackberry blackberry was mails that you could no you could do mails on it and the people who used to carry blackberries you knew that okay fine these are office executives who might be doing a lot of mailing now every phone has it you you have as many emails as you want and you can day in and day out you can uh, uh, push uh, mails to anywhere in the world you want so this is this is the encouragement that foreign technology and that is how it has worked now uh, in 1997 uh, 162 items uh, were like uh, like uh, the restrictions were removed from the imports uh, 69 items were moved to sil that is special import license uh, they were moved uh, import duties uh, were 300 percent or more for several items just imp imagine <coughs> sorry you're importing something and you have to pay a duty of 300 percent so just look at the, uh, the 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 spike that is there in the the cost of your product and of course then you when you go out and sell it how much of value addition can you be doing and how like uh, how can there be an economy of scale that's not possible so uh, these rates were reduced from 300%, 200% to 35%. So it, by 2001, we reduced it to 35%, which is still high, which if, if, if you talk to uh, importers and uh, like people who are doing for foreign things, they still always, every year in the budget, they're looking that, uh, of course, this is an old figure. This is of uh, uh, these things. And... Um, by 2001, we had removed all the QRs, that is your quantitative restrictions. That means how much of quantity you can import, export, all those had been removed. Uh, now, uh, what did we do for FDI, foreign direct investment? We have this automatic route, we have the government route, and we have the uh, automatic plus government route. Automatic route means you need not take any permission from anybody. You just go uh, sign an agreement with the company, ask them uh, to come here, either to collaborate here, to open their firms, uh, to open their uh, manufacturing units. Then you have the government route where the government invites them and asks them to come and invest in the country. And of course, and then the, you have a combination of the automatic and the government route. Uh, now, uh, if, if these are some figures here for you to just have a look that uh, it increased the fdi inflow uh, um, uh, fdi inflows increased from 55.56 billion dollars in 2015-16 then uh, 60.22 billion dollars in 17 16 17 uh, almost the same 60.97 billion uh, there was there uh, in 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 2019 uh, 20 we we had 74 billion dollars of course, uh, after after 20, there has been a lull in this for very obvious reasons. We know the reasons, so I won't go into that. Uh, now, 2020, like like the 20 period, 2000 to 2020, if you're look, looking at, so we have had a, a total $693.3 billion uh, which have come in. And... Uh, uh, like in the last uh, five years, that is 2014 to 19, it has been 319 billion. So almost 50% came in in this last period. So that has been an achievement of the first uh, NDA government. The NDA government won. Uh, that it, it has been an achievement for them uh, to invite a lot of FDIs. Of course, uh, there are there are two opinions regarding FDIs. There are people 
who feel that FDIs are not good, they, they exploit the country, they exploit the resources, uh, not your resources, and they don't uh, give you back as much. Whenever they want, they just withdraw and go, which, which creates crisis. Argentina and all those countries are examples. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, when they come in, uh, they bring in a lot of technology, they bring in a lot of employment. So all those things are also there. Uh, now, foreign technology. This is this is which is very interesting and which is very important as well. That uh, when we are talking about, so uh, we say that automatic permission will be given for 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 foreign technology in agreements in high priority industries, up to one crores, five percent royalty for domestic sales and eight percent for exports, and all all of these things. Like these are the 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 government uh, rules and regulations and. Uh, uh, if no foreign exchange were required for payments, so if, if you were not paying in any foreign exchange, then of course automatic permission would be given. Uh, if you were hiring foreign technicians, foreign testing, you need not take any permission. So uh, all those were there. Now we move to the third part. LPG, third part, the privatization part. Now, privatization, as I said, that privatization is when you are uh, when you are giving uh, the the the, um, uh, the the you are opening up the sector, you are opening up the public sector to private. So something which has which is reserved. Something which is reserved for the government sector is being now uh, being. Uh, given to the private sector, that that is what uh, uh, privatization means. And uh, so these are the forms of uh, privatization, ownership measures, organizational measures, and operational measures. So this is how it works. So what are ownership measures? Ownership measures is that uh, uh, how much of ownership has been tri uh, transferred uh, to the to the uh, private players and this you can have uh, that this can happen through total decentralization joint virtual liquidation workers cooperative uh, in india uh, we have had jvs a lot of jvs a lot of joint ventures have happened uh, liquidation yes exit policies have been there uh, total decentralization has taken place this has not been very very popular in india now, now if we talk about the second the organizational measures so uh, here, what you're doing is that you have a holding company. I suppose everybody understands a holding company. And if not, Google it, you know, what a holding company means. And uh, so you're designing it to take top level major decisions with sufficient degree of autonomy for the operating companies in its hold in their day to day operations. So uh, that is how you're doing it. And of course, leasing is when the government leases out its assets uh, for uh, to the private uh, uh, players uh, for for a specific amount of time for a specific period so that is leasing uh, uh, the government has done a lot of that uh, a lot of ppp form of a thing has happened in india that is public private partnership especially if you talk about uh, this um, uh, infrastructure in infrastructure we have been doing this a lot right uh, uh, if, if if you look at say roads and stuff like that so a lot of uh, 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 we we have been doing this a lot, uh, where we um, have the public-private coming together, right? Then restructuring, uh, you are re restructuring, so it's either financial restructuring or business uh, or basic restructuring that you are doing. Uh, so you are uh, like. Um, you you are wanting the, uh, the 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 public sector to become slim. <laughs> you are trying to shed off those extra stuff to to the ancillaries to small scale inter. Because uh, what has happened is that uh, even uh, even uh, 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 prior to 1991. The small scale industry SSI, which which comprised of my uh, cottage industries, micro industries, and small scale industries, even then a lot of importance was given to this. But the problem at that time was one, the investment threshold was very less. Like they had kept the investment threshold very very low. Now, uh, of course, uh, you have to take inflation into account, and all those things have to be taken into account, but. Uh, what that was uh, doing was that um, uh, the government was act 
acting in a sort of a big big brother you know it, it was more of a big brotherly uh, relationship that the government had and 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 uh, you were you were not expecting them to to flourish and you were not expecting them to do very high technology things right what you wanted them to do was to stick to handicrafts stick to court like all those things small things the traditional things uh but you you were not expecting them to do something very high and mighty you knew that they were generating a lot of employment so you you were doing that what msme sector now is doing like if if you look at the post uh, uh, nep new uh, new economic policy regime the msme sector now that has emerged one the threshold limit has gone up of course the the investment threshold has gone up many times uh, now like uh, it's it's 25 uh, lakh for a micro industry so that threshold has gone up uh secondly what it has done is now a lot of technology has come into it so you now find a lot of people doing uh uh textiles a lot of people into shoe manufacturing a lot of them into these household things that you are manufacturing a lot of ancillary units have become micro industries or like uh, small industries medium enterprises like they they have been becoming so so this is the change this is the restructuring that the government has done that uh, they have uh, they have like uh, either like uh, when they shed their weight these parts which were basically previously being done by the government or by the public sector has now moved to the private sector and now being they are being done much better way more efficient and of course we need a bit of more of labor reforms though labor reforms have taken place you people uh, are from the industry so you know the labor reforms like that 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 four basic uh, 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 tenets of law labor laws which have now come in previously i suppose there were 22 labor laws and now they have categorized them into four so that, that that's a change that is there uh a bit more of labor law changes have to be brought in because uh, this this entire formal informal sector that india has this uh, huge uh, informal sector that we have uh, in the private sector is because of those labor laws so if if those things can be changed uh then how you improve the uh, uh, your operational efficiency how do you do that so uh, you give more autonomy to the public enterprises that means again bureaucracy is lessened you give incentives to the workers you you make them a lot like private enterprises where it's it's a carrot and stick policy okay you do well uh, Uh, like a carrot is being dangled in front of you and then there is a stick and you are you are asked to be more 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 effective more efficient mm, uh, you are you have given that them the freedom to acquire certain inputs from the markets that if you feel that uh, this is not uh, you are not getting an input from the government previously again like previously what was there that there was a linkage there was a linkage that uh, if a government sector was manufacturing switch your electric switches uh and somebody there was another company of public sector which needed this those switches so it was like it was mandatory to buy it from that public sector now they have said that no don't do that if you want that there are certain things which are much cheaper in the market go and buy it from the market if you find that those qualities are much better go and take it from the market so that that freedom was given uh then of course uh, in investment planning was being done uh, permission to public enterprises uh, to raise the resources uh, was uh, given all those things were happening then we come to the second part where we talk about the evaluation of the reforms uh, how to evaluate now this is a quote by our ex president uh, uh, mr k r narayanan uh he says that there is a consensus in the world today that economic development is not all and the gdp is not necessarily a measure of progress of a society so uh 
of course, uh, he he's talking more in terms of HDI, the Human Development Index, and stuff like that. But uh, that the, the reason I have used his uh, quote, uh, this quote by uh, Mr. Narayanan, is because uh, it, this is how you have need to evaluate the new economic policy. So it's just not about GDP. It is not, of course, GDP is important. Of course, of course, growth is important. Of course, you need to move the economy forward, but you need to take your people forward. You need to take them forward. And for that to happen, you need to explore a lot of areas. So uh, this is, this is, we have already discussed, so I won't go here. And uh, the oil crisis and all that, I won't go into this. Uh, the MRTP and FERA Act were more uh, made made more accommodative. Of course, we yesterday talked about the OGL labor laws uh, uh, were amended. Of course, strikes and everything. Now, the labor, the union labor unions have already almost become toothless, right? So the, these were the objectives. So if you now look at the objectives over here. these these objectives which were there these were all not entirely economic they were not entirely economic in nature uh, like uh, what 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 mr kr narayanan has said so it is not just about the gdp you uh, you have to have equality though uh, if if you read uh, if you read thomas piketty uh, he uh, is a French uh, economist and he has written a lot about inequalities. He has written it about India as well. And uh, I don't know, like I, I was just looking at my books and trying to figure out where that uh, Thomas Piketty book is uh, because he has written so much on, on, on the inequalities. Okay, so from this distance, I can't see my books. Okay, fine. Uh, it's all right. So uh, this is because if equality is there, like your economic growth matters only if there is equality, only if you reduce the regional disparities, only when there are less number of poor people in your country, only then it matters. You, you can have a few people uh, becoming world's number third richest, number fifth richest, number 10, uh, within 50, how many Indians are there? Of course, that's a matter of pride. But then uh, that that wealth distribution has to be equitable. Otherwise, uh, it, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, if if uh, the majority of your population are in bad shape, this will lead to social unrest. This will lead to commotions. And it will have an impact on your economy. It is bound to have an impact on your economy. In the past one year, if you look, there have been some major companies who have withdrawn from India. Can you people name a few? The countries that have withdrawn in the past one year, past one year, two years from India, especially from the manufacturing sector, which are the companies which have moved away from India or they have closed shop here. Okay, so everybody is uh, taking a break. Join in and... Uh, okay, I do understand that it's a Saturday. <laughs> uh, right. Any Anybody anybody who is still plugged in, uh, who is still listening? The companies who have withdrawn from... Uh, India in the past couple of years. 
if we can have a few names. Yes. Wake up. I've stopped speaking. <laughs> ha. We should be playing a bit of music here. Shruti, give me a few names of the companies which have who have uh, left uh, India in the past. Ford, very good. Okay, Ford. Who, who else? Samsung is still there, I suppose. Uh, Chevrolet, okay. Uh, Samsung is still there in the, the Gur uh, in Gurgaon. I suppose they had opened a big uh, uh, manufacturing unit, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Prime Minister had inaugurated that plant. Uh, I, I, Samsung is still there. Samsung is still there, no? yeah. So yeah, like uh, Ford has been there, Chevrolet has been there. Uh, I'm not remembering. There is one more company which had uh, which has. Uh... Chalo, okay. Uh, Fiat, right. ठीक है, ठीक है. मुझे याद नहीं आ रहा था. Plus, like IKEA, the way IKEA had come to India, just uh, Madhav. Nokia. Uh, Nokia चला गया अपने यहाँ से? हाँ. Okay, ठीक है, <laughs> okay. पिछले साल ही uh, चला गया था. Uh, no Nokia, I suppose, uh, is also changing its um, its manufacturing thing also so, like yeah. from mobile. From yeah. mobile, it is shifting uh, to uh, other technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yep. So that, that is also there, I suppose. That is also one of the reasons. Now, there are n number of reasons for them leaving the country. Uh, but one of the reasons is also the, the, uh, the social environment that is happening around you. So that also has a great impact. The reason that that social unrest is being created. Of course, there's a political narrative that, that, that plays a major role. But uh, you also have to understand that when your distribution is not equal, that creates a lot of problems. If your distribution is equitable, if you're creating jobs, if you're giving your youngsters something to do, if your education system is aligned to what the industry is needing. If I'm teaching here today, and if I'm not aligning it with what the industry is requiring, or if I can't answer your queries to what is actually happening in the industry, you, you, it's difficult. Like I remember, like one of my friends, uh, friend, uh, her husband has uh, this uh, shoe uh, shoe store, uh, has a simple shoe store in here in Punjab. Uh, they. Uh, like that that's a like oh, there are many shop owners shoe shop owners here who used to import their entire material from china and they used to visit china at least once a year before corona before the pandemic happened and uh, when the when pandemic happened uh, suddenly uh, of course uh, the travel uh, embargoes were there like you couldn't travel that that was there but uh, then a lot of uh, things got stuck because the rates, the import duties were increased, uh, things changed, this entire narrative came in about nationalism and all those things. But you have to understand that as a shopkeeper, of course, he's nationalist, of course, he, ha he loves his country, all those things are there. But at the end of the day, he's a businessman. And he has to do business and he'll be buying it from the country, which gives him it uh, at the lowest possible cost that is possible. Uh, if, if Indians can do that, if we can do that, if we can manufacturing it in our country, if, uh, nothing like that, nothing like that. But that is not happening. So till the time that is, so this is where this, this, uh, these, uh, these uh, social or the non-economic, rather, uh, rather than using the word uh, social, I should be using the word non-economic. So this is where the non-economic objectives play a very, very major role. And now, like uh, 1991 of, onwards, uh, we have started uh, giving a lot of emphasis to uh, like uh, HDI. Of course, it started from 91. Uh, but that is when Mehbubul Haq, the Pakistani economist, and Amartya Sen, they got together and they came up with this uh, entire concept of uh, human development index. Uh, 
which was adopted by UN and then uh, uh, HDI has got um, uh, three components. Four, four, uh, in, like indicators are there, but uh, uh, under three, three main uh, components. So there's health, there's uh, your um, uh, education, and then there is per capita income. So uh, the reason why HDI became important was because of this. Nowadays, you are you are listening to something called happiness index. Uh, though, uh, I, if you ask me personally, statistically, it is a very wrong measure because the sample size is too too small, very small sample size they are having. But uh, why are we talking about happiness index? Why are we talking about HDI? Though happiness index is again something uh, you can say that it's very superfluous. Uh, countries like Bhutan, uh, they have their own like that is the country which started off this with uh, this entire happiness thing and. Uh, I happen to have uh, a few of my uh, students from Bhutan who, uh, whom I had given this uh, task of uh, like as, as a dissertation work in their masters. I had asked them to work uh, on happiness index of their country. And they came back and told me that, Madam, there's nothing like there's nothing that we can see there. And uh, there's nothing concrete out there which is happening. So, uh, so this you can always debate and like you can always say there are people who, who give it a lot of importance. Uh, what I'm trying to make out, what I'm trying to emphasize here is that the non-economic factors also play a very, very important role. And the new economic policy somewhere had that. And now with these SDGs that you have got, previously you had the MDGs. Now you have got the SDGs. So in SDGs, also the 17 SDGs that you have, uh, there is uh, no poverty, first, hun no hunger, second, uh, uh, gender parity, five. Uh, you have all those things, uh, reducing inequalities. So these are your sustainable development goals. And how do you do that? You, the, you do that through your economy. Otherwise, how can you do that? So uh, uh, you, if, if, if there is a Swachita Bharat Abhiyan, uh, there is, uh, of course, you need it. But there is somewhere at the back of it, the SDG is also playing a major role. If you're talking about smart cities, uh, there is an SDG uh, behind that. If you are giving away food uh, to people, if you're having schemes like midday meal scheme, you have got the public distribution system, you are giving out uh, uh, grains to people, uh, there is a, a SDG called no, no hunger. So uh, these are things which need to be remembered when you, you are doing all these things, right? So uh, I've been speaking for past more than one hour. And I'm a bit tired, you can say that. I, I'm just opening up your, uh, you people for questions, discussions, debates. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we may continue for a few more minutes. Yeah, please come out with your observations about what, just anything, not necessarily ki new economic policy, ko hi lekar hoga, what you people are thinking about the economy from your, your experiences in your particular industries. How do you people perceive? Where do you think it's going? What are the positives in the economy right now? What are the negatives in the economy? Where do we need to improve? Stuff like that. And anybody can take the lead. Or do you want me to name people? I won't like doing that. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Please go ahead. Yes. From uh, just share your experiences your in your particular industries. Vrinda has already left. She says that before ma'am asks me, let me move out. Dimpi, if I can have you. Yes, ma'am. What is your experience about the Indian economy right now? Ma'am, I have to think uh, uh, before I speak. <laughs> uh, do not make any political statements. Of course, I do understand that. But uh, just kya lag raha hai Acha ja raha hai, bura ja raha hai. Kya, kya hai? Because as, as students of economics, as students of management, of course, we have the right to point out the things which are not doing well. Uh, 
Ma'am, I can just, uh, I mean, uh, day before yesterday on the newspaper, when I saw the Indian currency against mm. the US dollar was for 79. Mm. Uh, I mean, I see a very big concern because right. the, the economy actually it's uh, inflating now and nobody is focusing on that. I feel that. I don't know about others because even if, like, uh, even the household goods have become so expensive. Everything has become so expensive. Um, and nobody is ready to discuss it. Yes, because people are so much concerned about the political uh, issues. Nobody is focusing on the economy of the country at all. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, right, let me, okay, good, very good. Thank you. Uh, Vidya has also raised her hand. Vidya, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, man, for the interesting session and the information that you provided. I was not, I'm not that, uh, you know, uh, from this background. So uh, on a very high level, I would point out few points. Mm. Um, as of now, uh, I see uh, India is in a uh, you know, much better position mm. and is doing, uh, you know, uh, new uh, initiatives, mm. taking new initiatives. Uh, as we see uh, at this moment, Mm -hmm. um the countries like no like we had a um the japan the Jap japanese uh, uh, or the german they mm -hmm. had uh, the impact on our economy mm -hmm. uh, be because of their uh, issues their mm -hmm. internal issues mm -hmm. now it's not impacting us on on a greater level because you know the reforms being or the uh, initiatives been taken by the government mm -hmm. are in such a way that we are becoming more independent and not depending on them on their uh, economy or their uh, you know uh, export or import uh, mm -hmm. so on a high level understand that that we are doing better than others mm -hmm. uh, that's why what, what my take is on uh, economy at present okay great great good to hear from you uh, Shruti has written something. Just let me read out what Shruti wrote. Uh, same here for the background, getting information. Uh, okay, right, Shruti. I can give you so much of information which you can read. <laughs> Being a teacher of economics. Uh, Madhav. Thank you, ma'am. Yep. Actually, I'm not a student from economy. No, but, no, uh, but I yeah. can. Uh, mm, I just understand. To, uh, matlab, uh, so small, but hmm. I can uh, say that uh, uh, previous year uh, in, in the uh, year of stock market, hmm. previous year I invested something uh, hmm. uh, by thinking that uh, yes, I can gain at least more than uh, 6%, hmm. but this year, hmm. this has been gone minus 5.53%. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so sorry to hear that, so sorry to hear that. Huh? This is the yeah, so this is economic condition. What is the economic condition now? Yeah, hai Madhav. Dekhe, economics ke hum, I never say that you people need to be masters in economics because you're not, and you're not supposed to be. What you need to understand is you need to correlate what is happening, like what Dimpy said, what you are saying. That uh by mere aas paas jo ho raha hai, wo main dekh rahi hu, na? like you invested your money. You did not put it in the bank accounts. You did not put it into an FD, a fixed deposit because you thought that the market would give you a better return. That I, I suppose that was the logic uh, behind uh, your investment, Madhav. Yes. Yes, and uh, that has gone down. Of course, it will it will bounce back. It happens. Uh, it will bounce back. What Dimpy is uh, talking about inflation, about uh, uh, constantly things getting more expensive, and nobody talking about it. So these are the things. Now, on the other hand, Vidya feels that it's it's far better uh, than what we were because we are becoming more independent, which is again very true. Because... In that content, ma'am, uh, uh, I would like to say, uh, India is showing that uh, we are growing uh, in economy. But mm -hmm. if I consider before mm -hmm. COVID, mm -hmm. India has given the inflation about uh, six to seven percent. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. shown. Mm -hmm. they, during COVID, they have shown India is going under five percent. Mm -hmm. Now they have shown India is growing up seven percent. Then mm -hmm. where is the increment? Uh, it yes. is leveling. Uh, Madhav, that is, you know, uh, I don't know how much of statistics you use. But what statistics are when we when we teach statistics, we always say that there's a statement in statistics. Ki, there are lies, there are damned lies, and then there is statistics. And statistics yes. wala ye hai aapse, ki kya 
like what do you want me to show you want me to show <laughs> yes. this i'll i'll show you this you want me to show <laughs> this and i'll i'll show you this so as a yeah. as a, you give me data and i'll show it to you so mere ko do data do ab jaisa bologe main tumko waisa bana kar dungi so that is yeah. that is a play that is a play that you can do as 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 a layman of course things which are happening around me like look if you ask me tanima what do you want i want things not to be too cheap but i don't want it to go beyond a certain level right i want employment for myself i want employment for my kids i want education to be uh, aligned with what the market needs so i want that and if my kids want to go for for higher education just for the academia uh, they should be having such institutes which which uh, promotes that i want to have a very healthy art and culture thing because that that is something which is very dear to us as indians it is very much there so we want all those what we do not want of course politics is very very important it's a it's part and parcel of your development but we have to have a certain certain uh you know that that what dimpy was saying that that disengagement has always been there ज्यादातर लोग इतने इतने अपने रोजी रोटी में ही इतने घुसे हुए हैं कि उनको फर्क नहीं पड़ रहा कि महाराष्ट्र का सीएम कौन बन रहा है कैसे बन रहा है दे डोंट दे आर नॉट बॉर्डर्ड अबाउट इट राइट एवरी डे इन द नाइट यू कैन हैव एन नंबर ऑफ पीपल कमिंग एंड शॉटिंग ऑन द टेलीविजन सेट्स बट द जनरल पब्लिक इज नॉट बॉर्डर्ड अबाउट दैट एंड इफ यू लुक इफ यू लुक एट द चेंज इन द कंजम्पन पैटर्न ऑफ television output that also shows you a lot of change in the economy that is happening right now k dramas have become very very popular i suppose all of you agree with this that the k dramas have suddenly become very important and not important uh, very popular and because the k dramas the korean dramas have become so popular their uh, their products especially the food items have become very popular and now you are you read that yahan pe ke products korean products mil rahe hain wahan pe shop khul gayi hai yahan ho raha hai there are hotels and restaurants which are coming out with their entire week of korean cuisine and that is something that is being promoted by the tourism ministry of korea the ministry of tourism by korea they they are promoting it so something in similar lines of course it has been being done by our uh, our country before also now it is it is being done by us we have also been trying to influence because if you if you go to britain it's all about butter chicken right so hamare uh, hamare curries or chickens or ye sari cheeze hamare bhi world mein pahunchi and that is but that that difference that you see that tells you that okay now people are bored with ekta kapoor's uh, melodrama and they want something different and that is the same thing that they are expecting from your economy as well so they they do not want uh, the leaders coming out and telling us that this 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 they want results on the ground and that that disenchantment or that this uh, association with uh, politics has always been there we we have we have we are not a very politically mature country barring a few states in india uh, very few states in india where you find very healthy political debates happening or where people are very aware uh, like uh, say west bengal kerala uh, these are few states jahan pe logo ko bahut samajh hai baki states mein to aaj bhi caste aur class ke naam pe uh, vote dal raha hai and because wo caste or class ke naam pe vote dal raha hai to policies bhi usi tarike ki ban rahi hai that is where the economy is also moving that is how the things are going so all these these environment jo business environment when we are uh, talking about that is that is what gets reflected that's the reason that ikea uh, had to change a lot of things like when ikea opened up their shop uh, and they started selling food there uh they came up with a lot of things and then they realized that you know no this won't work if you remember way back when kfc started in india i suppose 96 97 when kfc started uh, working in india uh, they had to close shop the reason is that they were using animal fat to uh, fry chicken and uh, we are a very peculiar lot uh, we uh, eat chicken but we don't want it to be fried in animal fat hame wo moongfali ke tel mein tum talkar chicken khilaoge to wo hamare liye theek hai 
पर यदि तुमने लाड में चिकन मेरा तल के मेरे को खिलाया तो देन इट्स इट्स एन इश्यू विद मी सो सो दीज आर द इंट्रिकेसीज दैट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इज देयर एंड दैट गेट्स रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द प्रोडक्ट्स दैट यू आर सी डोमिनोज ड्यूरिंग नवरात्रि डज अ नवरात्रि स्पेशल पिज्जा in india only in india you will find a jain pizza right or a jain burger what is that reflecting that is reflecting what the society is wanting that is something that that comes from there so these are the understandings these are the small things if you if you are understanding the environment that is there around you you understand the indian economy as well then wo chalo theek hai main maine lamba chauda bhashan diya hai do din se aapko de rahi hu ek aur din dungi kal bhi dungi main aapko indian economy ke bare mein but if you understand these small small things which are happening around you and you understand that look this is the environment that we were talking about and this is this is how it has impacted that uh, uh, this is what is required and that is how localization uh, Yes, Bidisha. We we need to do that again. You know, I Bidisha have been. I am very very skeptical about per capita income because I think so that per capita income no use in any hona chhi. Of course, we you we do not use the per capita income as as such. We use the purchasing power parity uh, thing. So we we take it in terms of the purchasing power of that income and then we measure it. So that is far better than just using per capita income, which is an average. HDI. long long way uh, during corona the entire health system uh, the collapse of the health system was evident wo samajh mein aa gaya ki how good your health sector is and all those tall claims and you, you know what like in the budget you can come to know about the seriousness of the budget of the governments whoever is there in power since 1947 it is being said that at least 6% of the budget has to be given to education ye 1947 se bola ja raha hai uske pehle se gandhi ji bolte aa rahe hain like if you read his he has written a lot on education in india and this entire this this ye jo 14 years compulsory education that is something that we have taken from gandhi uh, this uh, this uh, both boys and girls studying together this is something that he he wanted it so he uh, from then we have been talking about 6% and how much are we actually spending in 2022 hardly 3% hardly 3% including school education college education prof, uh, these 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 uh, uh, ye jo iits ye wo sara kuch mila ke itis sara kuch mila ke you are just spending 3% of your budget health not even 3% look at the nfhs report and you you come to know that uh, how much is the government spending and how much is the government not spending on health so what vidisha is writing i totally totally agree with that hdi i think and especially in education also we need to bring like you know there has to be a bifurcation education should not be just a means of livelihood like you you have to make it very clear that what you whether you want to go for education for livelihood or whether you want to go for education for academia like we are, i am teaching you indian economic if if i know like right now what we do is we try to uh, bring back uh, <sighs> okay uh, let me just finish my academia thing that uh, in in academia uh, like right now what when we are teaching you we are trying to balance it out between the uh, industrial need and between the academia on the other hand if i just know that i have to just uh, teach you for the industrial purpose then i'll be i'll my my pedagogy will be entirely different will i'll be talking to you about data i'll be talk teaching you how to analyze that data how to go about things that will be a different phenomena Uh, and so on now what vidisha is asking me about the chinese you know uh, uh, the chinese model till 1979 if you look at the chinese model they had a very closed economic model till 1979 one of the biggest blots on chinese uh, history is the uh, cultural revolution that they had uh mao chala gaya uh, uh, um, uh, 1979 में कौन आए जेंगा शायद वो दरा देख लेना वो आई एम आई गेट कंफ्यूज्ड विद द नेम्स 
uh, 1979 uh, they uh, 1979 onwards they opened up their economy so they started following a centralized capitalist model the beauty about the chinese model is there are a lot of uh, human right issues there there are a lot of things that the chinese are doing wrong but one thing that they mastered is the scale of production uh you people are old enough to remember that uh, when this entire uh, smartphone or or mobile phone thing came there were these chinese models that came which used to play very loud music and you never knew that aaj chal raha hai aur kal chalega ki nahi do you people remember those like the nokia was the market leader there was sony there was samsung uh, there was ericsson and then there was intex uh, which was local uh, and then you had those chinese mobiles do you remember those chinese mobiles खूब जोर के बचते थे मतलब उनमें म्यूजिक जो प्ले करते थे ना बिल्कुल and they have maximum, uh, of them. maximum of them are chinese and they have uh, they have surpassed samsung and this is not only an indian phenomena mind you it's a global phenomena samsung has lost out in a big big way in spite of all the technological changes like nokia kept its eye shut to technology and that's the reason nokia moved out what china that that was a beauty that they brought out phones they gave it to you they made it and they constantly did research on it and the thing was that this entire dumping thing that we read is uh, is is something that china did yes yes uh, vidya apple is also assembled in china and when this uh, this thing happened with that orange man and uh, the chinese premier I, i i suppose you people all know who the uh, uh, orange man i'm referring to uh, when when that fight happened apple had to retreat uh, they had to move out of china like china said go back and uh, chi- apple had one of the worst years uh, because the sales were not there because china was a very very big market for them so th- that is the model that we have uh, and in india wh- where we failed is that we lacked in scaling up they they previously they were not concerned about the quality they just went with quantity unhone ka itna banao itna banao aur itna dump karo ki nobody will think beyond chinese products so whether it were your batteries whether it was your buttons whether it was your clothes your umbrellas your hawai chappals uh, your bed sheets uh, your uh, your these ic's uh, integrated chips your mosquito repellents um, you know around about 65 75% of the uh, products that we are using at home even the the so called nationalist people who are using it in, in their home is chinese then what they did was that they uh, they then started improving the quality they said that acha ab hamar ko ye pata chal gaya ki i can manufacture 10000 units in an hour now what they did is that they started working on technology and if you look at their model a very smart move like um, i i have a few friends who are in new york uh, in the in the software market in the software field they tell me like my students uh, friends they tell me that when you move around in new york you don't feel that you are in america you feel as if you are in china because you see more chinese people than you see americans there and what china has done is that it is sending out its young people there to study to learn the technology they are buying a lot of american companies now in america uh, as per the law i don't know the entire law what little i have read uh, they uh, they have this provision that it is not necessary that when a company selling itself that it also sells the technology it can keep the technology with itself and it can sell its company to somebody else what china is doing is that it is making the deals so sweet 
that uh, the companies are selling the technology. So instead of developing the technology, they are buying the technology and then they are making it go. I'll give you another example. You might say like, like I'm giving you examples all from my, my area. Like I had this colleague of mine who had worked in uh, Japan and China for a pretty long time. And then he came to our university to teach uh, for a session. Uh, he said that uh, he was working in Japan and Japan got a project from China and uh, they had to go and train, they had to go and work in China. So he said that we went there and we stayed for six months and the Chinese employees, they followed us like glue, like wherever we went, only they left us when we went to the loo, otherwise they were doing it. And, uh, they were uh, they kept learning everything in those six months that whatever we were doing whatever measurements this that and they kept noting it down and slowly that that project uh, like uh, that project ended and the uh, japanese moved out and they started doing it themselves so this is this is the difference in the model between the chinese model and the indian model bidisha too long an answer so sorry for that. Huh? No, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, right. So it's 8.18 and I'll be stopping the uh, recordings here. And I'll stop uh, the class as well. Like uh, it, it has been good interacting with you people.